Hey everyone, Michelle Alexandria. I'm here with a video. It's been a minute. It's been a minute. Um, I'm not even going to make excuses like the fact that I look a mess or my apartment's been like renovated for two months and I've been kind of homeless um, throughout this renovation process. I won't get into any of that stuff. What I am going to talk about is this LG G3 TV that I bought a month, month and a half ago. I love this TV and I feel like it's not getting the love that the t that it deserves. It's probably one of the best, if not the best TV you can buy. And especially at its current price point of $34.99 for the 77 inch TV version, which is what I have. And, it, and if you buy from Best Buy, Best Buy is thrown in the stand. So you can't even use that the lack of a stand that's the excuse not to get this TV. This TV has been flawless. It's been a dream TV for me. With that said, I'm returning it simply because I want that high sense 100 inch TV. I gotta see what that TV looks like. So I'm gonna get that and if it fails, I'm going back to this TV. But let me talk a little bit about the LG TV. When this TV first came out in March or April, all the reviewers trashed it because suddenly reviewers care about HGIG and gaming and gaming accuracy. And I'm like, what the hell? Where the hell did, did all of this come from? Where suddenly gaming, color accuracy and gaming and HGIG is the most important thing in the world when, when the TVs that they actually praise um, don't even have HDIG. I, I swear, every single year, reviewers find one thing wrong with the LG TV and they will harp on it the entire year. The entire year is either, ooh, HDIG isn't working. Ooh, there's no DTS. Ooh, 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 ooh. And they always pick something while other TV manufacturers, they ignore all the issues those TVs have. Right now, they're praising the Sony A95L is still it's the second coming of God, and it's a $5,000 TV. And if you look at the forms, that TV is plagued with issues that you know reviewers basically ignore. Um, but anyway, that's neither here nor there. I'm here to talk about the LG G3. So this TV, I don't have much to say about TVs anymore, but I will say this TV has worked flawlessly. In a month and a half that I've had it, I haven't had a single crash a single hiccup, switching between inputs is a dream. Unlike the nightmare that the Samsung S95C gave me, here I can switch easily between an uh, app. So this is my this is my Apple TV. And I programmed a couple of hotkeys because right now I'm really into K-dramas. And the built-in apps on the, on the LG TV in my Shield uh, actually works a lot better than my Apple TV. So if I want to go to iKill, I have that set to number one on my remote. So I just hit one and see how fast that switched over. Look at that. Look how fast that switched over. Um, and then I could go to my second, my other favorite uh, app right now, which is a K-Drama Asian app called Vicky. And I could easily like swap. See how seamless and fast that switch. And I didn't have to do anything. It's just all on, the, on my remote. You know, the remote uh, most critics hate. This remote is so functional. I love it to death because I, it has like nine uh, hotkeys that you can actually program to any input or anything you want. So again, check it. Look how fast, look how fast it switches. It's seamless. On the Samsung TV, you would have to you would have to hit like five different buttons to do this. And then uh, here, that's my YouTube. Look at that. L look how that's one of the things I really love about this. The other thing I really love about this is if you're playing something, for example, um, I don't know I don't know what I can play that's not going to get me flagged. So here, I'm going to go to my content. And I'm just talking about the usability of the TV right now. So if I go to my content and I just play something, let me just play, let me just play this. 
you go to my content and you play something and I and I go, well, you know what? I think I'm in the mood to watch uh, K drama or something. I I hit my number one. See how fast it switched. Man, the cool thing is, if you go back to if I go back to YouTube, look at that. It picks up right from where I left off on the video that I was just watching, and it does this for all, basically all the internal apps. So again, I can have like four or five different things wide up and running and it was automatically switch over. So here, I, I, I don't, I don't think, I don't, I don't think they're going to, will they, will they sue me with here? I'm going to, I'm going to try this and hopefully I won't get blocked. I, I won't get a copyright strike, but here I'm going to go, I'm going to show, I'm going to, I'm going to play this. I'm going to play like two seconds of this. If it ever comes up, come up, come up, come up, come up, come up, come up. Um, uh, so, so see, look, look how beautiful that picture is. Just look at it. Look at that. So, and I think this is 1080p. So, uh, I can't, I can't, I can't tell. Oh, there it is. Settings. Yeah, that's a 1080p picture. Look how... Look how amazingly sharp and crisp that is. Look at that. That is that is stunning. So then watch. I go right back to my old app. And see it just plays. It it just plays. It just works. So you go back. And it just plays. And then I could just switch over to like that app. And then I can go back to my Apple TV and, and see how quick and easy that is um, with no much, no fuss. On the Samsung TV, there are no input buttons, so you can't do that function. You can't easily like swap between apps at all. Um, and whenever you do, it, lo it would lose a connection. So it would lose a connection. So you pretty much have to turn off your TV, turn it back on. To get it to work. I may be exaggerating a little bit there, but I had to do that so often. It was driving me nuts. Um, but yeah, so there's that. Um, out of the box, I didn't have to do anything really out of the box to get a picture qu a picture I liked. All I did was I used, I ended up using the, uh, this setting is no joke, the uh, personalized picture wizard. Um, it told me I like a clear and sharp picture, and I'm going to show you exactly how this works. So you go in the personalized picture wizard, and then you and then you start the process. Now the thing is, I play with a bunch of different uh, variations of these se sections, and I I can't consistently get the clear and colorful or the sharp and colorful. So I'm not exactly sure which selections actually get you that. But there I like so I'm gonna go through and show you what, what I like generally like generally like. So I'm gonna go with uh, I like that one because I like seeing the clouds. I like this one just because it's blue and the green is a little bit oversaturated and I like a little oversaturated. I like a little oversaturation. So this one it looks really clear and clean. Uh, and this one is just oversaturation. So I like that look. So I'm just gonna pick that. And then I like the clear, I like the two clear ones. So I like there I like all of these actually. Um so I like that one because the mountains, because the mountains you can see the water in the in the water in the front front. There's a lot of three D three D pop to that image. So I'm gonna pick that, and it's a toss up between this and that. It's a toss up between these two. I like this one because it's super clear. Whereas this one is clear, but it actually has more. It has less blue. So I'm going to go with this one and then this one, contrary to what you may think, I've tried clicking these three and I don't, I don't 
get like a colorful image like you would think. So I'm just gonna go with what I actually like. And I like this view, and I actually like uh, this one. And then here I like this, and I like that. But I can also be talked into going with that, and maybe this one. But you have to really think about what you want to pick. You have to really think about what you want to pick here. So I go with, and the great thing about this personalized picture wizard and the potential of it, I can see this thing becoming really great in like two or three years because right now I think it's pretty, it's pretty solid. And all you need to do to get the picture you want without really fussing around with settings and stuff is just use this. But one of the reasons why I've always loved the LG TVs is the fact that you could tweak the picture however you want. However, with the personalized picture wizard, uh, it locks out a lot of the key functions, which is kind of annoying. So you're kind of just stuck with what you have. So I'm gonna go with next. And then I like the sharp, I like the sharp one. So I'm, I'm gonna go with maybe that and maybe this to get it to cool down a bit. So let's see what it tells me I like. I like a clear picture. I like a clear and sharp picture. I don't know the difference between the two, but I like a clear and sharp picture. So anyway, you, you go here. And now see how the picture is? And the, and the great, the really nice thing about this is Again, and even my remote, I'm using my TV, my LG remote to control my Apple TV because it works right out of the box with no issues at all. And all the other TVs I've had, I've had issues with getting the remote. I had to actually physically program the remote to actually work. And with LG, it just does. So that's awesome. So, so look how sharp and beautiful that is, how clear that picture that is. So, you know, let's see what the settings for the personalized picture wizard what shows up. So you had the brightness. I, I purposely brought it down to 80. Um, one, of the, one nice thing is if you use default settings, it'll default to like a hundred brightness. But because I had changed the default to, I changed the 80 at some point, it automatically remembered that. And your, per, and your personalized picture wizard actually transfers over to HDR and HDR and Dolby Vision mode. So, so if I'm watching something in HDR, I'll have HDR personalized picture automatically selected, or I will have, um, or in Dolby Vision is automatically in mode there too, where this says Dolby Vision uh, personalized picture, which is pretty cool, I think. I, I think that's pretty cool. Um, and like I said, this TV gets super bright really bright. Um, so I pretty much have to turn it down a little bit. Now, when you're in the person, when you're in the personalized picture mode, uh, the thing I don't like about it is it blocks out and a lot of the things I like to change, right? So auto, auto dynamic contrast is pretty much set, uh, is set to however the picture mode decides you want to set it. Gamma is set. And then clarity, Oh, you can't do anything with the color, so that's annoying. Um, so that means you can't change the, uh, war your warm temperature settings or any of that kind of stuff. Uh, auto sharpness, uh, sharpness adjust is turned off as well, uh, but you can set your, your resolution, you can set your noise reduction, your impact noise reduction, and your smooth gradation. And I can tell you, I know a lot of reviewers scoff at all of this and they tell you to turn it off, but don't. Because if you use this function, th this functionality, the way you're supposed to, you will get a super clear picture and the upscaling is like, just blows me away on this TV. It, it, the upscaling is just on point. And again, I use all the AI picture settings, like AI picture pro, AI brightness, uh, AI genre selection. All of that stuff may sound like a gimmick, but it really isn't. It really works. It works very well. 
And that's one of the things that annoy me about reviewers, especially when they're reviewing LG TVs because, and they compare it to Sony TVs because they always talk about, oh, Sony's picture processing is amazing and all this other stuff. Um, and it's amazing. And when they review LG TVs, they turn off all these features and just go into filmmaker mode and call it a day. And then they turn off all these features and then proclaim that, you know, Sony and all these other TVs are better when they just start. I mean, there, there's no universe where the, where the S where, where the price difference between the G3 and the A95L is justified. There's almost no universe where that's justified. A95L may be a little bit better, but it's certainly not $2,000 better. And 99% of you would be ecstatic if you had this TV. Um, so anyway, let, let's go back to some, let, let's go back to, oh, let's go back here. Because I think I, I had my own content plan on this version of YouTube. Yep. So let, let's go back here and just show you some more content. So yeah, uh, from a picture processing standpoint, brilliant. Sound quality, audio and audio. The TV supports DTS pass-through, native DTS, so that's great. It has uh, Dolby, Dolby Atmos sound, also great. Um, but the problem is the onboard speakers are terrible. And I only listened to it for a day, and that was a while ago, so maybe it's actually better than I thought. But I, I bought an LG soundbar to go with this TV. And I have to say, buying the LG soundbar to go with this TV it's kind of a catfish because it doesn't, I don't think I get any benefit from having the LG soundbar working with this TV. The only benefit I get from that is the fact that the soundbar actually works with the uh, TV's uh, sound mode. So if you go over here to sound, you can select different modes and the soundbar will automatically recognize and play those modes back. So you can actually use AI Sound Pro, which I'm not a huge fan of. Uh, you can use standard cinema home, cinema, clear voice, sports and music. Um, and, and your sound bar will actually recognize all these various modes. Um, but that's the only real, that's the only real distinction I see overall. I'm not all that happy with the sound bar. I feel like I was kind of ripped off, but I only paid $400 on sale, but I, normally this sound bar is a thousand dollars and I definitely don't think it's worth that, especially the surround sound speakers are terrible, um, for this, for this sound bar, but the built in audio on the TV, I don't think is particularly good either. So it is what it is, but look at, look at how beautiful that is. Just, just look at how beautiful all of this is. It is stunning now on the gaming here let me find a let me find a game to play just so that i don't even i don't even have like a game oh Ooh. do i have a game to i i need to, i need to play some games and upload some games here <coughs> oh here we go let's up let's upload this spoiler right here <laughs> uh, so so anyway um, gaming on this TV has been great. I, I, like I said, I will admit that when this TV first came out, the HDIG mode was broken and it actually delivered like really like the, it wasn't so much that it was broken. It's just that the image was darker than, um, the rest of the TV. So you go from the super bright TV to this kind of darkish, uh, uh, TV if you use HDIG, but I never used HDIG. I've always used dynamic. Uh, dynamic mode and you get all your brightness back but that issue has been fixed um, over the last few months because this new the TV I have now does not have that issue and that's the that's the other problem I have with reviewers again they will pick one issue and just harp on it I'm not sure if I mentioned this earlier because I've been talking for like 20 minutes but yeah they'll pick one issue like oh HDIG is broken and they'll they're, they're just completely like trash and ignore LG TVs for the rest of the year, even though that's been fixed. But with other manufacturers, 
they excuse the fact that those manufacturers don't even have HDIG to begin with, so why HDIG becomes the end-all be-all when it's only available on LG TVs it's pretty much only available on LG TVs. It's beyond me. Um, and when did when did people start can do? And I don't think ninety five percent of gamers out there give a crap about uh, color accuracy in their games. I they're not pausing the TV and looking at the sky, trying to find banding or or clipping or any of that kind of stuff. Most gamers. In most most gamers, at most, they would care about whether or not the TV is bright enough. And yes, this TV is super bright, and whether the ABL is an issue. And again, on this TV, it's not an issue at all. I have not noticed. I've used this TV for about 600 hours, and I have not noticed a single bit of dimming on uh, ABSL on this TV at all. And as you can see, this screen is super crisp and clean. And again, everyone knows about uh, LG's prowess, their prowess in gaming and all the uh, features, all the few gaming features this TV has, including four, four, four HDMI 2.0 port, 2.1 ports. It supports VRR and all that kind of good stuff. And, and it supports 120 hertz. Um, I don't know about 144, um, because I don't, I don't do PC gaming, so I don't really care about that, and I'm not going to pretend like I care about that. For console gaming, it's, it, it works flawless. I haven't had a single issue with console gaming on this TV at, look how good I am. Look how good I am at pressing those quick time buttons. Um, look at that. Look at that. Oh, wait, I'm about to die, I think. <laughs> um, so, so yeah, I love this TV, and the more I, and the recent update that came out two days ago, my God, the picture is just wow. There's actually no like, there's no, there's no. I mean, this is YouTube con. What well, I filmed this in 4K, I guess. So there's that, but there's no. You don't see any banding on the. There's no banding at all. You don't see any pixelation on the stream at all. And I wish I could show you some low bit con content, but I don't even know what I could show that wouldn't get me flat. I don't even know if I even have any low bit rate content anymore. Um, I guess on my Plat server, I could. I have Dark Angel, but that's. I have like two or three shows that's really super low bit, and I don't watch YouTube TV because YouTube TV sucks. Um, so yeah, but upscaling, great on this TV. I, I, I don't have much anything else to say. Um, I kind of regret exchanging this TV now. I'm hoping in the end I won't because, you know, it's a 100-inch TV for $3,000. So... I have to at least take a look at it, and if it and if it's terrible and doesn't live up to this standard, then yeah, I'll I'll exchange it and get this TV back. Because like I said, I don't have any interest in the S ninety five C. I've been there, done that. I would be tempted to get the Sony, but a it hasn't been available. I think Sony's playing games with the whole with the whole uh in and purposely limiting stock on that TV because I refuse to believe that there's thousands of people out there buying a $5,000 TV. I just don't buy it at all. <laughs> I don't believe that for a single second. Um, but, um, yeah, I, I don't, and I don't think the Sony is $2,000 better than, than this LG G3. So again, if you're in the market for a TV, unless you're going to go for that high sense 100 incher like I am, um, this LG G3, 77 inch at $34.99, is a steal. At $4,000, at more than $4,000, then I would have, like, I wouldn't have any issues paying $4,000 for this TV. I did pay, like, $4,500 for this TV earlier this year. Um, the only reason why I returned it earlier this year was the fact that Best Buy had totally messed up my order and took away all my total tech member benefits. So 
I had to kind of like just zero out the order and just buy buy the TV for scratch. Um, and once I did that, then I was like, well, you know, I want to try something else. <laughs> um, but but yeah, I I love this TV. It's amazing, um, and I have no complaints at all. Not a single complaint about this TV. And all of you know, I always have something. But this time, I don't have a single complaint. And, you know, that's a victory. So, anyway, sorry for this long rambling video. I will try to put in some, I will put in some chapters later this week. If you want to watch the chapters. Um, but, yeah. I, TV leaves me speechless just watching it right now. But I, I just figure I don't. Nestle, I'm not a pistol peeper, so as long as the TCL doesn't have any blooming and it's not buggy, I will be happy with it. I will say my one complaint with this TV is the Dolby Vision is just weird this year. The Dolby Vision on all on on the Q on the Q Q and Mate was also weird this year. It's like they changed it to be super dark and washed out. And on this TV, it's no different. That the only way I can get a really decent Dolby Vision uh, experience is when I watch it in vivid mode. I, I think they're trying too hard to go for accuracy and filmmakers' intent in Dolby Vision, which is what it's originally supposed to be. But they need to leave some modes open for every for the rest of us. And Cinema Home, I was never really able to get that, that punch that I wanted. I actually had to use Dolby Vision uh, Vivid and kind of tone that down and play around with that to get it to where I want it. Um, but that's one of the nice things about LG TV, TVs versus other TVs I've used. You really can fine tune the picture uh, just about any way you want. But yeah, I, I, I was having trouble getting Dolby Vision to be exactly how I want it. Like, Vivid was too bright and too bright and I wasn't able to get it as a cinematic, I suppose. Whereas Cinema Home was too dark, and even when I pumped up the brightness, it was it it was still like just too warm. I don't know. It was weird. But when you're watching just HDR, and when you're watching HDR, um, then HDR is a lot more like SDR. Um, so HDR will give me a picture. Well, this is this picture is in HDR, I believe. The oh, that's the other thing I really love about LG TVs is um, I I love seeing that pop up. Uh, let's see. Nope. I, I was I was hoping to be able to show you like a HDR thing, um. But yeah, I TVs left me speechless. So anyway, that's it for the LG G three. I will I will be uh. Like I said, I'm getting the 100 inch uh, high sense. And the one problem with the 100 inch high sense, I don't even know how I'm gonna install that thing. I had the room for it, and I bought this super duper mount um, for it. And I don't know if I wanna put that on my wall since I do rent a part. And, and, I, and I'm scared, and I'm scared of Flintstones thing will happen where you put that monster TV up and the entire wall is gonna come crashing down. And I also have some table mounts that I may be able to use. So it's going to be interesting when Best Buy comes tomorrow. It's going to be interesting. So anyway, I am out of here. I'll try to do more content. I always say I am and I never do. But I am so far behind on all my interviews. I got to get that stuff posted. I have like eight interviews in the can from like four months ago from like pre-strike. Um, that I need to get posted. You see, I did those interviews like three or four days before the strike happened. And once the strike happened, I really wasn't able, allowed to really post that stuff. And now it just feels old. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's what happens. So anyway, I'll talk to you guys later. Bye. <laughs>